All right, everyone, welcome to Learning Objective 3, Chapter 10, explaining how to account for bond transactions. So we're just going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, a corporation records bond transaction when it issues or retire ba uh, bonds. And when we say retire, we mean buyback. And when the bondholder converts bonds into common stock, okay? So if a bondholder sells a bond to another investor, the issuing firm receives no further money on the transaction, nor is the transaction generalized by the issuing corporation, okay? Bonds may be issued at face value, below the face value, that's a discount, or above the face value, which is a premium. Bond prices for both new issues and existing bonds are quoted at a percentage of the face value of the bond. Thus, if we say that we have a $1,000 bond with a quoted price of 97, all we are trying to say is that the bond sold for what 970. That is the price, the face value of the bond, which is 1,000 times 97 percent. Okay. In this example, we have Candlestick Inc. issues 100 five-year 10 percent 1,000 bonds dated January 1, 2022, at 100. Okay. So when we say at 100, it means 100 percent of the face value. So in order for us to generalize this issuance, we are going to debit cash with a hundred thousand, and we're going to credit bonds payable for a hundred thousand. Okay, and then for our interest expense, um, again interest expense is the principal times the rate times the time. In this case, we have hundred thousand as the principal, the ten percent as the rate, and the twelve, which is twelve months and twelve over twelve, which gives us one <clears throat> as the time. Okay. So in order for us to record this, we have interest expense, increase in expense to be 10,000 and interest payable to be what, 10,000. January 1, when this is actually paid for, then it's going to look like this. It's going to have the interest payable, 10,000 and cash is going to be what, credited 10,000. Now in the previous illustration, we assume that the stated rate and the market rate paid on the bonds were the same, but it's not always that way. The contractual or stated interest rate is the rate applied to the face value to arrive at the amount of interest paid in a year. Okay, so the market, which is the effective interest rate, is the rate investors demand for loaning the funds to the corporation. So bonds sell at a face or par value only when the contractual interest rate is the and the market interest rate are the same. So, however, the market rates change every single day, all right? So, when the contractual and the market interest rate differs, the bonds will either sell above or below the face value, okay? So, when the selling price is less than the face value of the bonds, then we say we sold at a discount. Now, when the selling price is more than the face value, the bond was sold at a premium, okay? Now, this is an example. Assume that on January 1, 2022, Candlestick Inc. sells a 100,000 five-year 10% bond at 98. Again, that means 98% of the face value with interest payable January 1. So how do we record this issuance? Okay, so already it's already been sold at a discount. Okay, so we have journal entry to record issuance. We have 98,000. Then we're going to have a discount on bonds payable, which is 2000 I want us to know that the discount on bonds payable has a debit balance, not because it's an asset. Um, it's actually a contra entry, which is deducted from bonds payable on the balance sheet. Okay, so we have a 2000 discount because the full value of it is what, 100 but it was bought at what, 98 so the discount there is what, 2,000. Now we have the bonds payable, which is 100,000, okay? On the balance sheet, again, like I said, we have the long-term liability. The bonds payable is 100,000 less discount on bonds payable, which is 2,000. And that makes it to be what, 98. So the 98,000 represents the carrying or book value of the bonds, okay? That's what we saw in the last slide. The issuance of bonds below the face value causes the total cost of borrowing not to be the same. 
okay so usually the cost of borrowing is the interest that you have to pay when you borrow okay now in this case we say we're going to pay ten thousand dollars every single year for the next five years when we multiply the ten thousand times five that gives us fifty thousand okay that is the cost of borrowing now each time you issue your bonds at a discount right then the cost of borrowing is more okay so the cost of borrowing in this case is what two thousand extra because the value of that bond is hundred but it was you received 98 at the end of the day you still have to pay back the full hundred thousand which means that it costs you two thousand more you know to get that borrowed okay so that's how we have our 52. Another way we can look at it is the principal at maturity is 100,000. The annual interest payment, which we have already established before, is the 10,000 times the five, which gives us 50. So the cash to be paid to the bond holder at the end of the period is 150, okay? However, the bond or the bond holder uh, gave, you know, the issuer 98,000. When we subtract that from the cash to be paid to the bondholder that gives us 52,000. So that is the total cost of the borrowing. All right, to follow the expense recognition principle, bonds discount is allocated to expense in each period in which the bonds are outstanding. Okay, this is another for us to follow the expense recognition principle. So, whenever we do that, this is called amortizing the discount. So, amortization of the discount increases the amount of interest expense reported each period okay so as the discount is amortized its balance will decline and as a consequence the current value of the bonds will increase until at maturity the current value of the bond equals to their face value or face amount okay so every single year let's say with the example we did before which was 2000 we divide that 2,000 by 5, okay? And when we divide the 2,000 by 5, that's what we're going to be paying every single year until we're done paying off that bond at the end of the period. So that's what we mean by amortizing. You are paying little by little every year of that uh, discounted amount until it is paid off um, after the five years. So assume that the candlestick ink bond previously describes sells at 102 rather right than 98 so this means that we are selling at a premium so here we have the 102 which is the cash which they received and the bonds payable which is 100 okay because that's the face value of the bond and then we have a premium on bonds payable all right on the balance sheet we're going to add the premium on bonds payable. remember in the last uh for the discount it was deducted but in this case, we're going to add it back because it's a premium on the bond. Um, borrower pays only the face value of the bond at maturity, and the face value is what? 100000 So that means that the bond premium is considered a reduction in the cost of the borrowing. Whereas the discount is an increase, the premium is a reduction in the cost of borrowing. All right, so the sales of bond above the value, the face value causes the total cost of borrowing to be less than the bond interest paid because the borrower is not required to pay the bond premium at maturity of the bond, okay? Thus, the premium is considered to be a reduction in the cost of borrowing that reduces bond interest expense over the lifetime of that bond, okay? So this is just like what we did before. Um, we have our annual, which is 100,000 100, times 10%. Uh, that gives us 50 when we multiply 10,000 times 5. We're going to less the bond premium at this time, which is 2,000. That gives us total cost of borrowing to be 48. Okay? Because at the end of the period, you're only expected to pay, right, the 100,000, the face value. Okay? Another way we can look at it is maturity. That's 150. Amount that you owe is going to be 50. Okay? 150. Uh, the cash received from the bondholder was 102. So total cost of borrowing is what? 48,000 okay so that's the cost this is what it costs you to borrow amortization of bond premium okay a bond premium like a bond discount is allocated to expense in each period in which the bonds are outstanding 
right? This is referred to amortizing the premium. Amortization of the premium decreases the amount of interest expense reported each period. That is, the amount of the interest expense reported in the period will be less than the contractual amount. So now because it's a premium and it reduces the cost, we're dividing that to 1,000 by 5, which gives us, I think, 400. 400 minus, all right, the 10,000 to be paid is what we're going to pay as our interest. And that's why we say it reduces, right, or decreases the amount of interest reported in every period because it is a premium. All right, let's do this together. We have giant corporation issues, 200,000 of bonds for 189, okay? So already know that's um, a discount. Journal entry to record the issuance of the bonds is as follows. We have cash of 189,000. Discount on bonds payable 11,000 when we deduct the 200 from the 189. And then we have bonds payable as a credit, okay, which is 200,000. Now we're going to calculate, um, show how the bonds will be reported on the balance sheet at the date of issuance. So we're going to have our bonds, long-term liability, bonds payable, 200,000. We are going to less the discount on bonds payable, which is 11,000. And that gives us 189,000. So regardless of the issue price of the bond, the book value of the bonds at maturity will equal to the face value. So assuming that the interest for the last interest period is paid and recorded separately, the entry to record redemption of candlestick at maturity will be as follows. So bonds payable is 100,000, cash 100,000. Paid in full is going to be the same, okay? Now, redeeming bonds before maturity. A company may decide to retire bonds before maturity to reduce interest costs and remove debt from its balance sheet. So a company should retire debt early only if it has sufficient cash, right, to do so. So when bonds are retired before maturity, it is necessary to eliminate the carrying value of the bonds at redemption date. And then two, record the cash paid. And then three, recognize the gain or the loss or redemption. Okay, so the carrying value is the face value of the bonds less unamortized bond discount or plus unamortized bond premium at the date of redemption. So assuming that at the end of the fourth period, Candlestick Inc. having sold its bond at a premium retires the bond at 103 after paying the annual interest. The carrying value of the bond at the redemption date is a hundred, four hundred thousand. So this is an example for us. At the end of the fourth period, Candlestick Inc. having sold its bond at a premium retires the bond at 103. Okay. After paying the annual interest, the carrying value of the bonds at redemption is a hundred thousand four hundred. Principal is a hundred thousand and premium is four hundred. Candlestick records the redemption at the end of the fourth interest period, January 1, 2026, as so we have our bonds payable, which is a hundred thousand. The premium on bonds is four hundred. Um, now we have a loss on uh, redemption, which is 2,600. This loss of 2,600 is the difference between the cash paid, right, of 103 and the carrying value of 100,400, and that gives us 2,006. And then our cash is 103,000. All right, so here's another example. RMB Inc. issued 510 year bond at a discount period to maturity when the carrying value of the bonds is 496,000 and the company redeems at a bond at 98 okay that's 98 percent of the uh, of the face value so we have a discount on bonds payable to be 4,000 and then we have our cash to be 490 in order for us to find the gain or redemption is the difference between uh, the 490,000 plus the 4,000 subtracted from the bonds payable, that gives us 6,000 on bond redemption. So that brings us to the end of learning objective three. 
um, see you in learning objective four.